He thinks he's the victim. That's why you couldn't follow it. That's why yesterday, as you listened to it, even though you knew that he would do his faux uh, remorse, he'd do his fake apology, he'd go through the motions of uh, pretending he was taking it seriously and pretending that this was important and lessons had been learned and it was uh, he was shocked and sick, just like he was furious and sickened about the stuff he already knew about and pretended that he didn't. He's shocked and horrified by what's occurred. He'd claim he'd say, "I'm taking full responsibility," and then he'd throw his junior staff under the bus by saying, "Well, all the all the bad stuff happened after I'd gone, after I'd gone, matron. I'd already gone back to dorm, matron, when all the bad stuff. I, I was there, matron. Yes, I was there. I was there in the very early stages." of the uh, shindig, jamboree, tuck shop raid. I was there in the very early stages of the tuck shop raid. I was, but, but all the bad stuff happened after I had gone back to the dorm matron. But nevertheless, I am going to take full responsibility for everything. Just run me through that again, would you, Prime Minister? You're taking full responsibility for everything while throwing your staff under a bus. Yep, par for the course. So you knew all that was going to happen. The faux apology, the fake sincerity, the nonsensical posturing, the little deceiver's smirk in the corner of his mouth, the claim that he was taking responsibility when the events that are unfolding before us prove that he was doing nothing of the sort. You know all of that. And the call, of course, ultimately to move on. We must wait for Sue Gray's report before we can talk about it. The events in Downing Street. We must wait for the Metropolitan Police's report. And then yesterday, about half past 11, presumably for about 47. So obviously we didn't follow that order that you can only talk about it. I'm thinking about Tory MPs, who we will move on to in just one moment. All the Tory MPs, so you can't talk about it until the report is published. You can't talk about it until the report is published. You can't talk about it until the report is published. The report is published. It's time to move on. It's time to move on. It's time to move on. My thanks to Jason in Putney. We've mentioned Ricky Gervais and Michael McIntyre. Let's go for another one of the greats, Eddie Izzard. Jason tells me he had a famous sketch where he talked about pears how they would be obstinately hard and unripe for days on end, and then suddenly, and without warning, they'd turn into inedible mush. The window of edible, delicious, pear ripeness was very narrow. It was so short it could be easily missed. That's just like the right time to talk about all the law-breaking in Downing Street, the chunder and fighting. Um, too soon, too soon, too soon to talk about it, too soon to talk about it, too soon. Oh, too late! Too late now, time to move on, time to move on. And, of course, some people will fall for it. And, of course, they will be led by the nose in many ways, by the sensibilities and editorial madness of the Daily Mail newspaper and a couple of others. But there it is. That's why, as you watch that apology, that apology for an apology, <laughs> that apology for an apology yesterday, you couldn't quite put your finger on what it was that made it so creepy. You couldn't quite put your finger on what it was that made it so offensive because you've seen all the rest of it before, but it was actual, genuine self-pity. A genuine belief that he should not be exposed to this sort of treatment because he is Boris Johnson. A genuine belief that somehow rules are for the little people and scrutiny is for the plebs. And that because this man who was a child framed ambitions to be king of the world and was described by his own headmaster as genuinely holding a view as, a, as an 18-year-old, that the rules were not for him. He seemed almost affronted by the idea that he was expected to live by the same standards as everybody else is exactly the same now in his mid-50s. And that thing yesterday that you couldn't quite pin down was the self-pity, the, 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 the victimhood. The victimhood of a man born with more privilege than 99.9% .9 of the country. He thinks he's the victim. And that's, I think, what left the Duper's Delight, it's called, isn't it? Duper's Delight. That little smirk. Coupled with a genuine belief that this shouldn't be happening to me, and therefore a genuine belief that the fact that it is happening to me is so grossly unfair that I'm the real victim here. <laughs>